African drums are talking. The white man listening shivers to the booming rhythm. Atavistic memories taunt him. The drums of his druid ancestors take up the beat again in his subconsciousness after a thousand years of silence. This is a land of mysterious rites, of devil dances and witchcraft. Out of the jungle comes a story of Africa. Professor Anton Edwards, in Africa with his daughter, his assistant, and Nguru, a huge native prince, is searching for a remnant of the lost Atlantean race. Following the directions of a preserved human head that talked, they descended into an extinct volcano and found an old civilization where they were condemned to death by the high priest. With the help of the queen, the professor caused the people to revolt and overthrow the priest. The talking head was discovered to be the invention of a madman who sought their destruction and followed them in all their travels. He is killed attempting to blow up the palace. With the riddle of the talking head solved, Professor Edwards decides to gain the outside world by braving the dangers of a dark passage that leads through the high cliffs which surround this sunken kingdom. It is early morning as our friends walk their horses over a knoll that will bring them in sight of the cave known as the Passage of the Rock. You didn't forget that grass rope we made, did you, Jack? No, sir. And Guru has it. What's the rope for, Father? Yeah, it's one of the most useful things to have, my dear, when going into unknown country. Never be without a rope in Africa, and you'll save yourself a lot of... Hold, everyone. Pull up. Oh, what? Well, can you beat that? What? The whole army's drawn up at the foot of the cliff. Looks more like the whole population. Well, no wonder the city was so quiet when we left it this morning. What's it all for? Evidently a send-off for us. <laughs> I thought we were going to slip away quietly. That's why I wanted all goodbyes said yesterday. They must have had secret orders to meet out here. We didn't hear any marching last night. Well, they expect to show, I suppose. We'll have to gallop up in approved style and... Uh... Shoot off a few rounds, sir? No, better not do that. They don't take kindly to firearms. Besides, we must conserve what ammunition we have. Might need it all. Wana, hmm? go to no have snake woman... Oh, shawty palava. No, Nguru. I think I miss that huge spirit of yours as much as you do. Eh, you'll have to rely on my war club from now on, old fellow. What's Nguru sounding so sad about? He hasn't his huge spear for the big parade. Oh. Oh. Buana. Naona. Snake woman. Oh. What's that? <laughs> well, for Pete's sake. He's carrying the bent spearhead with him. <laughs> So you did go after it, you old sinner, eh? Plenty good medicine, Buona. But it's all twisted by the explosion. Eh, nevertheless, it's still good medicine, Lorna. I somehow thought he'd dig it out from under the ruins. That spearhead has a peculiar history. Well, they're waiting for us down there. What are the orders, sir? Full gallop and pull up short in front in approved western style. All set? Right. Here we go. Mount. Queen's waiting for us. Great man, my people, knowing of thy intention, have gathered to bid thee a fitting farewell. You do us great honor, madam, more than we deserve. Thou hast freed my people from a rule of blood and fear. Thou hast given back to me the kingdom that was taken from my ancestors. Thou hast endangered thyself an hundred times. And yet ask no reward? To see happiness in the faces of your people is reward enough for us, madam. Oh, thou art a man. And the great God of my ancestors hath a reward in store for thee. Thou hast set thy face toward the dark passage of the rock, from whence no traveler hath ever returned. This is thy final decision? It is, great queen. Then shall a pick guard of my soldiers accompany thee into the darkness of the unknown. She's offering us a guard, Jack. Your father will never take it. See, there, he's refusing the offer. The queen doesn't seem to like it. Mm, that's father. If he thinks there's any danger, he won't drag anyone else in unless it's necessary. Is that opening in the cliff, the passage of the rock, as they call it? Yes. Doesn't look very inviting, does it? It does not. But it gives me the creeps to look at it. 
I wonder how far we'll have to travel once we get in before we reach daylight again. Heavens only knows. But we've plenty of torches. Your father's beckoning to us. Jack. Lorna. Her Majesty wishes to say something to you both. My children, for thou art children to me, brave children. My people and I have no words of sufficient weight to bespeak our gratitude. We can only bow to thy wishes and pray for thy safety. May I hold each of thy hands in mine for a moment? Of course. Certainly. There. May the God of my ancestors go with thee always. And now, the great black warrior who himself is a prince. Unguru. I born a palaver. Muga, O queen. Thou art a great and mighty fighter. In saving my life, thou didst sacrifice a weapon that was dear to thy heart. Therefore shalt thou carry a sword that hath been handed down to me from ancestor to ancestor. Thy mighty hand shall wield it to further victory. A crusader's sword. Mm, what a huge thing. Within this pommel of iron lieth an holy relic. Placed there in reverence many hundreds of years past, thy fighting heart will keep the quality of its tradition. I gird its trappings about thee. So, take it. Use it in good cause, and it will never fail thee. Ah, Asante Sana. Uh, Unguru gives you his thanks, Your Majesty. He is a man of few words and many deeds. He's taking it out of the scabbard. Oh, what a beauty. But isn't it too big to use in a fight, Jack? For an ordinary man, yes. But not for a girl. Watch him test the balance and swing. Wow, I'd hate to be in the path of that. Juana, it is good. Nguru, snake woman, say, Asante, Your Majesty. This sword, fashioned for a mighty arm could find no better champion in the cause of right. The prince has looked upon it and finds it good. He says both his dead spear and himself give you thanks. An arrow? Someone shooting arrows from the cliff, sir. That arrow was meant for you, Your Majesty. Evidently, there are some followers of the priests left. Uh Another one? Madam, please stand this side of the horse. It will protect you. Nay, I hide from no man. They're getting nearer. Juana, Nauna, He means that bush sticking out of the cliff face way up there. I thought I saw a movement there, too. Use your glasses, sir. Yes, there is someone there. I can make out a... I see him. Look out, there's another coming. Oh, gosh, that was close. Give me your small rifle there, Lorna. The beggar's perched very precariously up there. I think I can bring him down. What do you make the range, Jack? It's deceiving, sir. Those arrows come from a height. Yeah, that's why he's able to get so much distance. He's shooting out and dropping them. Well, here goes. You got him, sir. He's falling. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. I'm afraid he won't have any more murderous intentions now. Oh, that was horrible. Oh, great man, this to me is magic. Yet thou hast assured me it is but an invention of the outside world. It is, madam. Couldst thou not teach my people the secret of this weapon that kills through space ere thy departure? Your Majesty, I have thought on that subject at great length and have concluded that such an action would only increase your troubles. How can that be? Is it not of great value? In the country from whence I come are many who, because of this invention, must live in constant hiding. It has made killing too easy. In the hands of an angry man, it is more dangerous than the sword. For the subject of his anger has no means of protection. Flight is of no avail. And those who live by crime and thievery have prospered to its uses. Need I say more, Your Majesty? Nay, it is sufficient. Thou art a just and honest man. Go thy ways. And if there be an outlet to the passage of the rock, then do I pray that thou shalt find it speedily. I bid thee all farewell. And the God of my ancestors go with thee. Thank you, Your Majesty. Farewell. All set, people? All set, sir. Then let's go. It's footwork from now on. Well, why so quiet, Lorna? I think I'm a little sad, Jack. Sad to be leaving that lovely woman. She seems to be so lonely. 
But she has her own people. They all seem devoted to her. Yes, I suppose so. Maybe I'm silly to think that way. Heaven, doesn't that awful yawning cave look forbidding? Yeah, what do you make of the rock formations around the cave mouth, Jack? Basalt, principally, isn't it? Yeah, it's very coarse. There's some rhyolite and spongy-looking stuff. There's quite a lot of rock that's new to me. Yeah, see the andesite? We must be at least three miles down from the surface of the earth, as we know it. Notice some of the straighter lines running vertically over the opening, eh? Yes, they level out at the sides. Sort of a sunburst effect. Well, that's how the cliff fell into place when this land sank out of sight. Well, here we are. Better turn around and salute the queen before we enter the cave. Hold your rifles up over your head. Already? Salute. Hmm. Rather sorry to leave them. Fine bunch of people. And the queen is... Mm. Well, I better get along. Light one of the torches, Jack. Right. All okay, sir? Yeah. Well, keep close together now and don't lag. Well, now. Nguru smell them plenty death. Death? Oh, Nguru would have to say something like that. I've got the creeps already. Oh, look at that. Just a pile of bones, my dear. Yes, I know. Don't but... worry about those things, Warner. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Well, there must be an outlet somewhere, Jack. Well, great apes coming through here every so often prove it. Well, no. No, no. No. Oh. oh. What did you see, Unguru? Man, him stand to wall. No, no. Yes, I see. There's someone standing close against the wall of the passage right ahead. You see, Jack? Yes, sir. But it's barely an outline to me. Mm. Who's there? We're friends. No movement. Well, no. Him dead. Do you think so? Uh-huh. Well, keep your guns ready. We'll go forward and see. 